Let's try recording this again, this time actually hitting the record button. Good kitten internet. Oh, I was even about like 20 minutes or so into the video and everything. <sighs> Annoying. So, this video is about mental health. Um, where to begin? So I wanted to make this video for a bunch of reasons. I, I haven't talked recently on my vlog about my mental health. I've spoken recently elsewhere in, in a very public manner. My mental health is not very good, to put it mildly. Um, more re uh, most recent event being the pandemic that's currently going on here, where everybody's socially isolating themselves. Um, this is pretty much a worst case scenario for my style of mental illness. I am an extrovert. I regain energy by being around other people, physically being around other people. I don't know what it is about the difference between me, say, looking at a camera right now and maybe having a screen behind that camera and watching somebody else do anything, just like talk, versus having them in person. There is an actual difference for me. And it kind of flips a switch in my head as to whether I'm okay with things or not. Um, so as a result, I've been by myself, asterisk, I mean, my partner's been here, but uh, you know how introverts, one of the highest honors that an introvert may say is that you don't count as people? Namely, they don't really have their energy draw away from them because they're around other people when they're around specific people that they're comfortable and used to. It works in the opposite way for me. I'm an extrovert. I need to be around other people. My partner doesn't count as other people. While their presence definitely helps me and helps me calm down quite often, they also don't count for helping me recover. They don't count for letting me reabsorb energy. So that's a problem. Um, so yeah, as a result, the social distancing is utter hell for my mental state. My mental state wasn't that great to begin with even before the pandemic. I haven't mentioned this on the vlog. Hopefully Kitty will, okay, yes. Kitty did not hit the tripod. I haven't mentioned this on the vlog. My mother passed away about five months ago uh, with a brief but fierce fight with colon cancer. I, my parents are dead. I have very little blood family left at this point. I have no siblings. I have no parents. I have one set of grandparents, two uncles and an aunt. And their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, etc. But I'm um, not... It's not family that I've interacted with all that much, other than my grandparents. I mean, it's not like I don't know them. Um, it's more... They're not somebody to talk to every week, or every other week, or every month. Or even more than a couple of times a year. Heck, on my mother's side of the family, it's not even yearly that I was talking to them before she passed. Uh, this has kind of wrecked my mental state. Um, I think it's kind of shock that's still going on. So, this has been the worst year of my life. If you look at the past six months, these have been the worst six months of my life. If you look at the past year, it's been the worst year of my life. If you look at the past two years, it's been the worst two years of my life, and so on. This has not been a really great time for me mentally, even though if you look at it from a logistic, uh, logical perspective, not logistic, logic, um, I'm not doing bad. I have a stable income. I don't need to worry about where my next meal is coming from. I don't need to worry about medical expenses. My kitties are doing well. I I should be having a better time than I am. So what this video is about is not really talking about all the crap that I deal with. It's how I deal with the crap that I deal with. And the reason why I'm making that today is that this morning was my therapy appointment. 
and CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, is my primary way of dealing with my severe depression, two diagnosed anxiety disorders, multiple undiagnosed or unformally diagnosed anxiety disorders, and lots of other mental health issues. My brain's a wreck, to put it mildly. And the primary way that I deal with things is by talking to a therapist. Uh, CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, is sometimes known as talk therapy. Um, the picture that people bring to mind when they think about a therapist is somebody like lying down on a relatively comfortable lounge. Don't kitty, don't even think about it. Uh, relatively comfortable lounge talking to a therapist that's just sitting there and taking notes type of thing. That's CBD. It's not exactly what I go through. Um, in more typical times, it's more me sitting on the couch and my therapist and we're just having a conversation. Um, yeah, so for me, therapy, first 15 minutes are usually me just talking about the garbage that's happened since the last time I had a therapy appointment. Um, oh, I should mention, my therapy appointments are roughly every four weeks, plus or minus a week, depending on scheduling. And occasionally missing one because of stupid scheduling issues. Um... So yeah, first 15 minutes are me just talking about what happened in the past week. Then I usually stop, ask for something to drink, and this is where I need to explain how my brain works a little bit. I don't think other people's brains work in this quite like this. It's kind of like there's two brains going on right now. Apologize for any extra noise that you hear, my windows are open. It's actually a beautiful day outside today, except that it's night now. Um, it's kind of like there's two different people going on in my brain. Not really MPD or multiple personality syndrome or anything like that. Just there's a conscious part and an unconscious part. A good example of this is that I could be having a conversation with somebody, like really in-depth conversation, not just me going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. No, an actual in-depth conversation. Somebody will ask me in the middle of the conversation a math problem. And I'll keep up the conversation, and then maybe about a minute later, I will answer that math problem without thinking about it. What's going on to me is that my conscious side is focusing on the conversation. My subconscious answered the math problem and was working on the math problem during that time. That's kind of the type of thing that happens to me constantly. Um... So when I'm having my first 15 minutes with my therapist, subconsciously I'm focusing on certain objects. And that's actually what my next 15 minutes are usually, or talking about the things that I find myself drawn to talk about for some reason. And the reason why being that my subconscious is focusing on those. Those are frequently sources of anxiety. And well, with my life, there's a lot of those. Um, next 15 to 25 minutes or so, is usually my therapist and I talking back and forth, um, me speaking less, and my therapist speaking more for suggestions on how to cope, or even just a, yeah, no, that sucks, what the hell, type of situation, which was a lot of today. Um, and then last five to 15 minutes or so, just wrapping things up. I, as mentioned, it's about every four weeks, roughly, for an hour. Uh, unfortunately, my therapist is on the opposite side of Madison from where I live, so it's it's a lot of money traveling back and forth, um, because I don't drive, so that's about 45 US dollars to get there and about 55 US dollars to get from there to work. I usually have it first thing in the morning, just so I can go to work immediately afterward. This therapy was a little different because, well, we're kind of in lockdown right now. So therapy was over the phone, which phone being one of my source of anxiety, not the greatest situation, but at least I didn't have to pay this stupid taxi to and from the therapy appointment, and I can just start working immediately after, or a few minutes after. I need time for my brain to calm down. But that's my primary way of dealing with my depression and anxiety. It's basically just talking it out. And I do feel better after each of these appointments. And it's helped quite a bit. What's also helped 
is this furry little monster to my right and your left. Right, Sunkini? You didn't come over here and say hi? You're just gonna love. He's just gonna love for now. But, um, my cats are the second way. And I don't just mean in a normal, I have a companion sense. Um, this is specifically Zona Nissin. They should probably be classified as, um, oh, I was just saying the term on the first version of this that wasn't actually recording. What is it called? Um, emotional support animal. There we go. So emotional support animals, at least in the U.S., I can't say for elsewhere, have a really bad rap. Um, mostly due to rich people abusing the concept of them to get their precious little animal special treatment from others. Um... That's a stereotype, at least. My, and emotional support animals are usually not specialty trained or anything like that. Zone and Isun are acting very similar to emotional support animals for me. And if they actually behaved better in travel and were a little more formally trained, I might actually consider having one as a formal emotional support animal. They recognize when I'm having an anxiety attack or when I'm about to have an anxiety attack, and they interfere. It's not something I noticed up until, uh, actually it was a vlog that made me notice uh, when I was having a breakdown and I actually recorded that for a vlog. So I was trying to make a different vlog and didn't end up happening because of the breakdown. I noticed Isun comforting me. That's when I started paying more attention and noticed that both Isun and Zone will try to distract me from going into a full breakdown. And if I do go into a full breakdown or a full anxiety attack or what have you, they will come up to me and make sure that I'm okay. Um, so they help me manage things. The last thing that helps me manage things and the reason why I'm sitting on my bed and not just because it's really good lighting conditions is a weighted blanket. This one right here this is my primary weighted blanket. I have another one that's practically identical other than the cover being a slightly different shade, just so I can tell the difference between them. Uh, my partner is using that one right now. Uh, this is a, mm, is it 18 or 20 pound? If it's 18 pound, that makes it uh, about nine or eight and a half kilograms. If it's a 20 pound, that would be about nine kilograms. But this is a weighted blanket. It is heavy. Uh, the concept behind weighted blankets is fairly well known at this point because they became a fad recently. They are known to help reduce anxiety and a few other mental issues. Um, if you've never had a weighted blanket, if you've ever had a dental x-ray done, where they put that lead chest, uh, lead chest, lead vest on your chest that kind of feels heavy, but at the same time comforting, that's basically what a weighted blanket is for. It's supposed to help weigh you down and it kind of feels like you're being hugged all the time. Weighted blankets work very well for me. They have probably stopped far more anxiety attacks than anything else that I've done. Um, I started having the daily anxiety attacks maybe a few weeks before I got this weighted blanket, this one in particular, in fact, and they kind of just stopped for a while. It's not a great solution because one, I tend to kick it off if I overheat too much, and two, this might actually be the cause of my high blood pressure as well. I'm not sure about that. And also three, I adjusted to it pretty quickly. Um, weighted blankets help. They help quite a bit. It's not a great fix. Like, it's not going to fix me. This is more helping me cope, not fixing me. There really isn't fixing me. That's not a thing that can happen. Um, there are other methods of treating things like what I'm dealing with that I choose not to do. Um, antidepressants, for an example, and anti-anxiety medication. Uh, for antidepressants, um, something that I've mentioned on these vlogs way back in the past, but definitely not recently, 
is that I have a very strange reaction to most medications. Um, something got into the zone. Um, yeah, both myself and my mother had side reactions to pretty much everything. The list of medications that we can safely take is a really tiny list by comparison to the list of things that things just go wrong with. Um, and I was put on antidepressants when I was first diagnosed with depression. I would have been 16 years old. And I don't remember those two days at all. And I didn't remember them within a day or two of that time. Those days are permanently removed from my memory. Uh, from reports from my friends at the time, I was basically drooling at the table. My brain was not, it was, it's kind of like if I was still walking between class to class, but I wasn't cognizant of what was going on. I was completely unable to focus, and I don't remember any of it. That scared the crap out of me. I, we stopped it after a few days, and I've since brought it up with my doctors about maybe I should try again, because my depression is disabling. Um, in fact, when I was applying for government jobs, and they asked me if I had a disability, my answer was yes. Because depression is listed as a disability for government work. Severe depression like mine, I should say. Not just seasonal, which... I'm not saying that seasonal depression can't be severe. I'm saying that seasonal depression is frequently something that's treated in a different manner. And I don't know if it counts as a disability for purposes of government work. Anyway, that's a side tangent. Um... Great. Now Zone's going to use litter box. What was I saying? Oh, um, I've talked to my doctor about trying to use the antidepressants, and he basically went, hell no. Um, it's not something that would end well for me, most likely. Antidepressants frequently have side effects that people interact with, and those side effects can vary from mild to severe, and given my medical history of having all the weird and somewhat severe side effects, he didn't think it was worth trying. And that may be true. I'm going to trust the doctors on that one. Uh, Anti-anxiety medication was a similar but not quite the same situation. Um, the other thing that I've inherited from my mother medication-wise is the fact that I have an extremely high tolerance to certain classes of medication. Uh, Painkillers being the unfortunately infamous one for me. Uh, if I find a painkiller that works, the first time will work. The second time will work at about 20% effectiveness. The third time I'm immune. I'm immune to most painkillers as a result. Uh, there's a few painkiller styles that I haven't tried Specifically knowing that I can use them in an emergency. Uh, the only other type of painkiller that works on me is an opioid, and screw that, I'm not going to get addicted to those damn things. Nuh-uh. I will deal with pain. Um, so yeah, anti-anxiety medication is something that most people will start getting adjusted to. Given how fast that I build up tolerance to everything else, it's not... And my doctor basically said, we can give it to you once. It probably won't work the second time. So, that's not to say that antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications aren't right for other people. I should, I want to make sure that people know that. There is nothing wrong with using antidepressants. If your brain doesn't produce the correct neurotransmitters, store bot is perfectly fine. Unfortunately, store bot doesn't work for me. So I have to deal with my broken neurotransmitters. Unfortunately, anti-anxiety medications might work once. The second time it won't work at all, and the third time I'll be dependent on them. And that's not something I want to deal with. Instead, I have weighted blankets, I have cognitive behavioral therapy. Sun Kitty, you want to come up? Please, kitty cat, I'm recording. 
course he doesn't want to come up right now while I'm recording. Maybe you've actually seen him behind me, I'm not sure. He was at the start of the recording at least. I have kitties. Anyway, I've been rambling for long enough internet. I need to go to bed because I haven't slept a correct night's of sleep in weeks. Good night internet. I'll talk to you next time. Are you going to cut off now, Zone Kitty? Yes. Or not? Come on up, Zone. He's just being really camera shy today, isn't he? Oh, now you're here. My gigantic orange kitty cat. <sighs> you see what I mean by he tends to distract me? Today wasn't a great day for me mentally either. I haven't really had a day and I have a app that I have been using that rates my day mentally to give me an idea as to like correlations and so on. So it will say, hey, look, you've rated your day a one more often when you haven't been out walking, that type of thing. I haven't rated a day above a two in a year. No, less than a year. More like 10 months. This has not been my year. Anyway, Zion Kitty's telling me he wants to go to bed. Good night, Internet. I'll talk to you next time. If I can reach the camera. Zion, will you let me reach the camera, please? <laughs>